Lucy's murder. Lucy said she to move tomorrow to the Supreme Court Sunday. So we hear the epistle of the gospel of uh, St. Valentine. The epistle taken from the, the Old Testament of Wisdom, chapter 10. The Lord conducted the just through the right way and showed him the kingdom of God and gave him the knowledge of the holy things, made him honorable in his labors and accomplished his labors. In the deceit of them that overreached him, he stood by him and made him honorable. He kept him safe from his enemies and defended him from seducers and gave him a strong conflict that he might overcome. And know that wisdom is mightier than all. She forsook both not, not the just when he was sold, but delivered him from sinners. She went down with him into the pit, and in the bands she left him not, till she brought him the scepter of the king and power against those that oppressed him. And showed them to be liars that had accused him. And the Lord our God gave him everlasting glory. And then the gospel. Matthew chapter 10. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I am come, that I came to send peace upon the earth. I came not to send peace but the sword. For I came to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother and and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemy shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not up his cross and followeth me is not worthy of me. He that shall find his life, he that shall lose he that find his life shall lose it, and he that shall lose his life for me shall find it. He that receiveth you, receiveth me. He that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth the prophet, in the name of the prophet, shall receive the reward of the prophet. And he that receiveth the just man, in the name of the just man, shall receive the reward of the just man. And whosoever shall give to drink to one of these little ones, a cup of cold water in the name of the disciple. Men, I say to you, we shall not lose his reward. That's my word for today's holy God. Lord, the Father, the Holy Ghost, men, for two considerations in our time of battle, when we are confirmed. Receive the sacrament of confirmation, the bishop gives a little slap on the cheek in order to remind us that whoever wishes to follow Jesus Christ, whoever wishes to remain faithful, and who ever actually does remain faithful, not only in our times, so there are new communist president, and we're now a communist country going into the month of February, it's January 20th, we are now a communist country run by a communist dictator, put into power by the enemies of God. But not only in our times, but in all times, if we want to be faithful and actually choose to really be faithful, then there shall be a slap. Hence the bishop anoints the head, puts a hand, puts a cross, the sign of the cross on the head, confirm okay, I confirm you with the prison of salvation. And if you actually are faithful to this prison, you will be slapped. If you are not slapped, it means you are not faithful to this prison. Remember the famous miracle, or not miracle, but event in the life of St. Anthony the Hermit that we mentioned many, many times. And St. Anthony was walk, once walking through the desert with one of his disciples, trying to learn about the religious life. And a man came to St. Anthony and said, Anthony, I had a most blessed life. Everything is not wonderful for me. God has heard every prayer that I have ever said, and I have been blessed in every way throughout all of my life. 
And when St. Anthony heard these words, he became filled with horror and terror. And St. Anthony, of course, of all the saints, he is most famous, more famous than St. John Vianney, the most famous final saint for fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat against Satan. He fought Satan every day physically. And when he saw this man, and the man said to him he had no crosses, and the man said to him all his prayers were heard, and he had a most blessed life, St. Anthony turned and he ran with absolute terror and fear away from the man. The disciple, she and Anthony run in fear, said, if Anthony runs, I had better run also. And so the disciple ran also. Finally, he caught up with Anthony, and Anthony was all terrified. When Anthony had finally calmed down, the disciple said to him, Anthony, what's wrong? He said, that man has never known a cross. He has never known difficulty. God must be very angry with him. I don't want to be around when God shows up. Now the fact is, this is this, this event happened in around the year 400. Already 100 years after, or, or no, well, in the 300s, after the age of persecution was finished. When Anthony was a little child, it was a time of great persecution. When he grew up, the persecution ended. But trials never end. And what is the normal condition of the follower of Jesus Christ? The normal condition is trials. The normal condition is assault and hatred by our enemies. And remember our Lord said it in the very, very beginning. He made it clear when he came to this earth. And he's speaking here to his apostles. What's going to happen when he's instructing his apostles, Matthew chapter 10, just like St. Luke chapter 10, both those chapter 10s are St. Our Lord Jesus Christ instructing his priests what they're supposed to do when they go out on the battlefield. When you're going to go to the ends of the earth to bring Christ, to bring the reign of the kingdom of Christ, and, and also, what is the first word that a priest says according to Jesus Christ? When you walk into someone's house, you say, peace be to this house. That's what he told his priest to say. It is the same chapter 10. Go into a house and say, peace be to this house. And the same Lord and the same instruction says, at that time he said to the disciples, do not think that I came to send peace upon the earth. I came not to send peace, but the sword. I have not come for peace. I have come to bring the sword. He said the same thing in the Sermon on the Mount. He has not come to bring peace, but the sword. For I came to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemy shall be they of his own household. I came to set a man in variance with his father. This has happened so many times in history, especially in the case of vocations. Whenever a young man or young lady is called by God to religious life, the most common enemy of that religious life is the father or mother, the family. St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Francis Xavier, and St. Francis of Sisi, and so many others. The most common enemy of going to God is our family, our father, our mother, the father-in-law, the mother-in-law. And so there's going to be conflict, and I have not come to bring peace but the sword. Now we are often in times of the sword. Why is this? The reason is quite simple, extremely simple. There are three weapons of the devil. The world, the flesh, and the devil. The most wicked is the devil. The one that embarrasses us the most and we commit the most sins against is the flesh. We do not mention the flesh or the devil first. The three enemies are the world and the flesh and the devil. The first enemy is the world, and the world seems nowhere near as bad as impurity and gluttony, drugs, and so on. And the world doesn't seem as bad as Satan, who is, who is, who is directly preparing the world for the reign of Antichrist, 
and to destroy everything godlike in the world. But what is the first temptation? The world. In the world, we don't have the same goals, the same aspirations as the world. Hence, when Jesus Christ came into the world, he immediately came in as an enemy. The world wants heaven on earth, and Jesus Christ wants heaven in heaven. The world wants to fight the battle against the devil on the deathbed, and then they're during the course of life, live a comfortable and peaceful life of happiness here on this world. And Jesus Christ wants us to fight during the time of this world, and then go peacefully into heaven after having fought the good fight like St. Paul did. The world is always opposed to Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is always opposed to the world. And to arrive at the Gospel of St. John, chapter 17, in his prayer, St. Augustine points out, he prayed for everyone. He prayed for his enemies, he prayed for the apostles and disciples, and then he stopped his prayer and said, I pray not for the world. It's the only thing he says he doesn't pray for. I pray not for the world. He said that in his prayer of trying to make us all get to heaven. Because he's enemy of the world. He came to bring sword to the world. But this doesn't mean that we're not meant to live in this world. We are still meant to live in this world. We are not meant to be of this world. And we are going to another world. Hence we are called homo viator. The wayfaring man. The traveling man. We are going to this world temporarily. That is why it doesn't matter how much concrete and stone is in the Catholic Church. It doesn't matter how many thousand years old it is. On the altar in that church there is something called the tabernacle, which means the tent. Always it must have cloth on it if Jesus Christ is there. When you walk into a church and you see no cloth on the tabernacle, you know that Jesus Christ is not there. The sanctuary of man actually is a newer invention. If you see the cloth, you know Jesus Christ is there. If you don't see the cloth, you know he's not there. Because Jesus Christ lives under a tent in this world. He doesn't live in stone houses. He lives in nothing permanent here below. It's a temporary home. We are supposed to see this world as our temporary home, and yet all of us are trying to build a permanent one. Hence, Jesus Christ, in order to help us remember this as a place of journey, allows us to experience insecurity and persecution. There must be insecurity and persecution for us human beings in order to be able to walk through this world to aim at heaven. Everybody joins the gym, but only millionaires actually show up every day to exercise. They always show up because they want to be healthy. The rest of us join the gym because we have plans of being healthy. But they join the gym because they want to make sure that they eat right, that they are healthy, that they can live forever on this earth, which is their home. And they won't live forever on this earth. They're going to pass from this earth into eternity, and they are enemies of God. Remember that Lazarus went to heaven, the poor man, and Devez went to hell, the rich man, and Devez was a good Jew. And Devez went to church on the Sunday, or those days of the Sabbath. And Jesus and Devez will fulfill all the laws, and Devez burns in hell. Because Divas' home was here. And Divas' peace was here. And Divas did not want to fight here. Therefore, when he died, he went to another place. Home was not heaven for him. Therefore, when he died, there was no room for him in that place. 
And he went straight into the fires of hell. The events did not succumb to the temptations of the flesh. The events did not succumb to the temptations of the devil. He only gave in to the temptation of the world. And this temptation makes him burn in hell. The comfort of our society leads us to eternal damnation. Hence, God allows us to have Joe Biden for president. He allows us to have wicked laws that are increasing throughout our land. Why? In order that we might live properly and happily on this earth. Not of the world, but in the world. Hence it says in the epistle, Consider the just man, says the book of wisdom. He has all kinds of troubles. They try to kill him. They try to deceive him. And he is given a great conflict. This is what it says in the epistle. He, God kept him safe from his enemies and defended him from seducers and gave him a strong conflict that he might overcome and know that wisdom is mightier than all. We must understand that the wisdom of God is mightier than all. Now remember, even in the time of persecution, when many, many millions of Catholics were put to death, not every faithful Catholic died. If they did, there would be no Catholic Church today. St. Titus, for instance, his feast day was only a few days ago. St. Titus. Titus was a disciple of St. Paul. Titus lived to be 93 years old. He wanted to be a martyr, but he never was. He was only a martyr of charity. Every time they were going to martyr Titus, he escaped, and he was not martyred. Even in the time of martyrdom, not everyone is going to be a martyr. St. Titus is mentioned in sacred scripture. He was a disciple of St. Paul. And St. Paul said, My beloved Titus, who comforts me in my struggles, he was comforted by Titus. This man was so great that he comforted the greatest of all the disciples, of all the apostles. And St. Paul died in murder, but St. Titus did not. St. Augustine tells us, or rather, St. Alphonsus says, We do not know how we are going to die or when we are going to die. God knows. Therefore, we should live our lives according to the law of God and not worry about anything else. Many people today are worried, can you get married today? This is not the first time we've worried about this. How can you raise children today when the child protective services are going to come and take them away? When the laws that are in China and the laws that are now in the Philippines and laws that are in other countries who say you can't have too many children, make it illegal to have children, how can you raise a family today? You can. My sister-in-law, one of my sisters-in-law, is one of 17 children born in a place called China, where it's illegal to have more than one child, and all 17 of them are alive. Two sets of twins, one of them married my brother. They were not Catholics, they were Buddhists. About five of them became Catholic. But they just simply lived their life and had children, even though the law said you can't have it, and the children lived, and they weren't put to death. And they are all alive today. God determines the moment of death. God determines the moment of the victory of his own, his own self and the allowance of whether he will let us be martyred or not. Remember the St. Anthony, he became a Franciscan on the condition that they would guarantee that he would be martyred. And they said, no problem. There's one thing we can do is we can arrange your death. They, they said yes to that. And they sent Anthony to Africa that he might be martyred. But God had different plans. And Anthony did not die a martyr's death. Anthony was not meant to convert the Saracens, the Muslims. He was meant to convert priests. He was meant to convert bishops. He was meant to convert Catholics that were not living as they should. He was meant to be called the hammer of heretics. 
And he smashed heresy. And he died in the presence of his fellow Franciscans, a most beautiful death. God arranges things. Even today, there can be beautiful Catholic marriages with the laws all around us saying, you can't live a Catholic life, and yet you can. God determines the moment of our death, and God determines the moment of our destruction, the physical destruction. If we live according to his law and move in this world, what are the rules of combat? Keep moving. Don't stand in one place. He'll be triangulated and he'll be blown up. God allows us. Young couple gets married today. They're not going to have a home like their ancestors did. They're not going to have a stable job. And don't believe the old people, old fools who tell you don't get married until you have a good enough job. Don't get married until you settle down. No, we need children and we need marriages. Just be a hard-working man and be a good mother. And God will provide. You can have children under a bridge as well as you can have children in a castle. We must move through this life living according to the law of God. And he will determine the moment of death. And he will determine if we're going to become martyrs. And he will determine if we are not going to become martyrs. Because not everyone will be a martyr. Some will. And they shall have great glory and die in great happiness. Margaret Lithrow, when she became a saint and went to heaven, she was pregnant and with child. It wasn't very prudent of her, a pregnant mother, to house and protect the priest from the English, and they couldn't catch the priest. And he escaped, but she did not escape, and she was put to death with a little baby, and they both are saints. And their other children were taken care of, and their husband survived. God will provide. What is really important right now is that we must continue our ordinary life. Wait until they come with a gun and drive us out of our homes. But let us live an ordinary life. Live according to the law of God. Get married. Remember what the Lord Jesus Christ said. When the world comes to an end, they will be buying and selling and giving in marriage as in the days of Noah. And that's true. They will be. Most will be in the state of mortal sin. But well, not all will. Because what did the same Lord Jesus Christ say? He said, you know not the day or the hour. Therefore, don't be checking your clock all the time. If you don't know the day or the hour, then you follow the old t-shirt. Get busy. Jesus is coming. Keep working. You don't know the day or the hour. Keep building. Others are building the kingdom of Satan, and their kingdom shall be destroyed. It's a waste. We are building the kingdom of Christ. Our kingdom shall be everlasting glory. And so build the house. Build the family. Go to the religious life. Go to the seminary. Go live according to the life of Christ. And if maybe we won't be able to finish all, all of the, the training, maybe we won't be able to live a full 50 years of marriage, maybe we will, maybe we won't. God determines the time. Keep working. And then at whatever moment that his judgment comes, if we are found doing the work of God, then we shall be saved. St. Valentine lived in the time of great persecution. What did he do? He saw a young girl who was about to be handed over for prostitution because the family was destitute. He took all the church's money. St. Nicholas did the same thing. He took all the church's money and he gave it to the father and said, let this girl be married and don't hand her over to prostitution. And she was able to be married. Can we be married at the time of great persecution? She was able to be married at the time of great persecution and she lived a happy Catholic life. Another who wrote a letter, the 
she might also be soon be a good, a good, a good lady to be married. And then he himself was captured and he was put to death. But he did not stop marriage. He didn't stop young men from going to the seminary. He didn't stop the development of the church. And when he stood in front of the emperor, he said to the emperor, You, Emperor Datius, if you want to reign, you must follow Jesus Christ or your kingdom shall end. Valentine was martyred, and within a few months, his prophecy was fulfilled. You will not live out this year, said St. Valentine. And he did not. Datius died, and his kingdom ended. Now he burns in hell. We must understand, as the world's getting darker, the rules are getting worse, the police are surrounding us, the laws are getting crazy, people are losing their jobs and their houses and their homes. Don't stop living. Don't stop living according to the gospel. And remember that it takes tribulation sometimes. Young girl runs, has to flee her home, comes around the corner, and there is the man that she is meant to marry. You have to flee your own home, and there you find the monastery, and there you find the convent, and there you find the seminary, and there you find a place where you can actually do good for the future of society. Our ancestors have been driven from place to place. Remember, there are three great fonts of our religion. The Greeks, the Romans, and the most sacred of all, the Jews. The Greeks, our wisdom comes from them. The Romans, our way of operating comes from them. But our heart and our spirit and our life comes from the Jews, and they were always on the run. They were always in exile and being thrown back into their own home. And in exile again, not just those 40 years which they were in the desert, but continuously, as they offended God, they were driven away. And then they had to come back. They are traveling men. And we must understand that as Catholics, we are traveling men. But let us travel. Travel keeping our faith and recognizing that God makes the schedule, not the devil. We also know from prophecy that we are very close to the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary and that the whole world is going to become Catholic. Many of us will die before that time. That's fine. And others shall live. God shall determine which ones die and which ones live. The ones that die shall have glory because they died fighting. The ones that live shall have glory because they passed on the fight. St. Titus wanted to be a martyr, but he died at 93 years old in his bed. Passing on the faith that St. Paul told him to pass on. St. Anthony, St. Alphonse was very old when he died. St. Anthony was only 36, but he did not die a martyr. He died simply a martyr of charity. St. Francis Xavier did not know he would never reach China. China was the love of his life. China was where he wanted to go. He got one mile away from China. He could see the mainland of China. He got a fever and he died. He traveled the whole world and got one mile away on an island near the mainland of China. And there he died and went to his reward. Even the saints. You know not the day or the hour, but between now and the day or the hour, keep living, keep praying, keep working, keep spreading the gospel, keep doing the works of charity, persevere in patience. Don't change too quickly from our actions as the followers of Christ. And when we are made to move from one place to another, then we move. And God will take care of us. But continue vocations, continue marriages, continue children, continue rosaries, continue baptisms, continue fighting, 
And God makes the schedule and determines which shall be the day of our entrance into glory. In any case, you follow the example of the great St. Valentine, who fought to the end and preserved Catholic marriage, preserved the Catholic faith, and now has passed on to us and Titus and all the way down the line until our very time when we must pass the faith on to the next generation and God will determine who makes it through the fight and who does it, not the enemy. Closing with us all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.